We're going to talk about the flight controls now. Typical airplane, three axes, the ailerons, elevators, and rudder. The airplane was originally designed that all the flight controls have a spring bungee system that keeps them to the center. And then you can move that center with an electric jack, an electric motor that runs a cam and moves it back and forth. They're having a lot of problems with those cams slipping enough. I replaced all those with electric linear actuators and I took the sensors off that to be able to put inside the airplane so I can actually have a position indicator telling where it is. So if I, if I move the aileron, you can see it spring loads. It spring loads back to the center. I'll move the aileron from inside and you'll see it move also. These are called flaperons. They're not ailerons, they're flaperons. They're both a flap and an aileron. Right now, if I run the flap down, you can see the surface go down. They don't move much, I think it's 17 degrees. But even once they're down, they're still different from that location. So I'm done with the mixer inside. Having the flaps down versus not down, changing your stall speed about three knots is not a lot. Change your pitch attitude just a couple degrees, but they are flaps and they're used the same way. The elevator is the same thing. It has a spring loaded, only it's very heavily loaded. The airplane is so short as everybody talks about. You don't want to move when I move the control. And then I have electric trim on it. The electric trim repositions the center position. And my electric trim, since everything's 24 volt DC in it, I put what's called a pulse width modulator in line with the motor and I have a little potentiometer in the cockpit that I can change to change the rate of change. So sometimes I'm going to get into a traffic pattern you can do a lot of trim changes and there are more direct trim changes. I might increase that speed of that trim motor a little bit, but a lot of times in cruise I, I run the speed way down so that the trim doesn't move a lot. I have a, what's called the coolie hat. It's uh, on top of my yoke that controls both the ailerons and the elevators. The electric trim for the rudder, I removed. They again had the same bungee type effect. I completely removed my spring loading. I, I just used aerodynamic forces to, to straighten it out. Once I'm in cruise though, I turn my uh, yaw damper on. I have a yaw damper servo that runs the rudder and it works off of my um, uh, rate of turn indicator. It's out of a twin Cessna and it works just great. And once it's, it's attached, I have both the yaw damper and I can, it has a trim knob in the front of the instrument and I can send to the ball that way. Um, it's much nicer on takeoff roll. I'm not pushing against a big spring-loaded cartridge. And again, it's an experimental airplane. Everybody does something a little bit different. But I have electric trims for all three, for the electric trim for the, the two surfaces and the odd dampers and essentially a third electric trim. I have a, the pulse width module that runs it. But the event of an emergency, I have a third battery that controls the emergency backup stuff, and I have a, a spare way of running, bypassing the pulse width modulator and the normal electricity. I can run the electric trim with a toggle switch in the cockpit so that if I had to land without trim, it would be able to take some of the forces out. But the truth of the matter is, is no matter where the trim is located and the spring loading against it, you can always go past it just by pushing harder on the controls. You would never want to have your trim system get your controls to a position where you can't force it out of that mechanically if something